All right, practice quiz uh, that we did for our first quiz, the key. So let's take a look at some of these questions and see um, how we did. Just go through this a little bit. So rank the bonds below from most reactive to least reactive. Of course, one means most reactive, four at least. Best way to do these ranking kind of questions is to always look for the extremes and look for things that are similar. So every single one of these has a hydrogen, so that's staying consistent. And what's changing is chlorine, bromine, fluorine, and iodine. And if you know where these are at in the periodic table, you know that they are in the same uh, column. So size becomes more important. As you go down a, row, uh, down a column, size is more important. Iodine is much bigger than fluorine, which means hydrogen iodine bond is going to have much less orbital overlap than a hydrogen fluorine. And if you have less orbital overlap, you're sharing electrons less, which means you're more reactive. So hydrogen uh, iodine is the most reactive because it's the weakest bond, least reactive bond. I don't talk about weak bonds, strong bonds. I think about reactivity. Then fluorine, HF, actually um, is the least reactive because the hydrogen and fluorine are most similar in size, so they have the most orbital overlap, and then on down as we go. So again, as I kind of stated above, um, it's all about orbital overlap for the sigma bonds. It's less with large elements like iodine. More reactive, it's more reactive then because there's less orbital overlap. Size, so something about orbital overlap and size were kind of key here that we get those points. And also another way you could have thought of this, um, it's not just the reactivity of the starting materials, but the stability of the products. So a lot of times reactions take place because we have reactive, reactive bonds and or, and or stable products. So in this case, the bonds are reactive in HI because there's less orbital overlap. But also I minus is more stable because it's large, you can spread that charge out. Not like resonance where we're spreading charge out, but you know, because it's a large atom, I minus can, can spread out the electrons more than F minus could, which makes it more stable. So a more stable product, a more stable conjugate base. All right, so number three, let's on the Lewis structure below. So this is drawn. Add all lone pairs and indicate any formal charges on specific atoms. Key point here, all atoms obey the octet rule. So you need to start putting electrons all around these. So for oxygen to obey the octet rule, it would have to have three lone pairs on each of these. And if oxygen has a full octet with one bond, it has a negative charge. Sulfur, right below oxygen, wants two bonds. Or excuse me, yep, right below wants two bonds. So now it has a full octet. And bromine here has a full octet, one, two, three, four, right? Two, four, six, eight, eight electrons around it. But bromine usually wants to make one bond, so but it has four bonds. So that makes it plus three. So that makes this whole thing neutral, minus, 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 and a plus. Biggest things, add the lone pairs, things obey the octet rule, and then the charges. So really thinking about the formal charges um, and how many bonds different elements want to make. So here we're asked to indicate the hybridization state of the arrows or they're pointed at, one point each. Uh, this carbon is sp, uh, sp hybridized. That's a mess. That's a mistake on my part. It's sp hybridized. Sorry, sp hybridized. And why is that? Because it has. Look at the bonds it has. It has a sigma, a sigma, and two pi's. It means it has to have two p orbitals, so it must be sp. Up here, this atom has no pi bonds. It has two hydrogens there, and only has sigma bonds, so it must be sp three hybridized. This nitrogen little little trick here to think about, a little bit more of a challenge kind of question. This nitrogen only has sigma bonds. However, it has a lone pair and it's next to another pi bond, which means it can do resonance, which means this nitrogen will choose to be sp2 hybridized, so this lone pair will be in a p orbital so it can do resonance. So more of a challenge question there. All right, so for this last one here, draw resonance arrows to go from structure A to B. So A on the left here, draw the arrows. The electrons from oxygen move here between C and the O, because right we see the new pi bond there. And then wants to add any formal charges. So in this case, everything was neutral actually. So this carbon doesn't have a full octet, but doesn't have a charge, because it has one, two, three, four electrons. So it's four valence electrons around it. However, once this, so this is a neutral molecule oxygen with two bonds, right? It has a full octet. Once this carbon monoxide, though, this lone pair comes here, and we form a new bond, the, the, the carbon actually got more electrons, so it has a negative charge, because now the carbon 
has three bonds and a lone pair, octet, the negative charge then. And the oxygen lost electron, so now it has a plus charge because it has three bonds and a full octet, so it have a plus charge. So that'll be A, that'd be B. All right, so for six, draw and label the hybrid orbitals for an sp hybridized element. So when you ask for the hybrid orbitals, you're always gonna need four. So sp hybridized, sp hybridized, right? What four orbitals are associated with that? Well, we know sp, what kind of bonds does it have? It has a pi, a pi, and two sigmas. Therefore, the orbitals, the hybrid orbitals, have two p orbitals, as drawn here, and then two sp orbitals, which are 50% s, 50% p, so a little shorter and fatter than an sp3 or an sp2. Continuing on this sp, sp thing, if we're drawing, what this case, I wanted you to draw the bonding in the molecule below showing all bonds present using hybrid orbitals. So I, what I really wanted you to do was actually draw out this hybrid orbital picture. And it's kind of tough to see. I mean, I'll draw it in red here a little bit, make it easier. All right, that you can see these, a p orbital, a pi bond here. 90 degrees away, there's another pi bond. All right, this is a 180 degrees flat. And you can see the two hydrogens. These are the sp sp hybrid orbitals making this bond from the carbon and the other sp orbital on each of the carbons making this sigma bond right so this is this is a using hybrid orbitals to draw that molecular orbital picture so finally number seven this is a uh favi ver is an antiviral medication that i found that actually has some potential in treating influenza and i thought it'd be an interesting one for us to look at uh, because it has so many uh lone pairs and also because it has uh uh, lots of resonance pot potential. So the first thing I just wanted you to do is draw the lone pairs um, in the in fiber purveyor below. So make sure you did that. Um, plus two. If you if you're missing some, you got plus one. So all the different places has lone pairs. And then I want you to draw two different resonance structures, and I was asking you to redraw it um, for each one. And this is just one example. There's lots of possibilities here. Um, I chose to use the fluorine to push electrons into the ring um, for this one. So Fluorine goes here, should number my carbons, of course, and atoms. Make a new pi bond. I break this pi bond, make a new pi bond between nitrogen and carbon. This pi bond breaks, and I put the lone pair on that atom. So that's one possible structure. I'm not saying it's a good one. Uh, plus one for the structure, plus two for the correct arrows for a resin structure you made. Uh, another possibility, I pushed electrons in from the oxygen. Uh, so pushing electrons into the ring from the oxygen. Make a new oxygen carbon pi bond. The carbon nitrogen pi bond breaks and put electrons there with a negative charge. So again, plus two for any of their arrows, plus one for the structure. Lots of possibilities here. Um, yeah, interested to see what you have. One thing I would tell people to be careful of, the nitrogen lone pairs here are not part of the delocalized system. This nitrogen is sp2 hybridized and it's already using its one p orbital for this pi bond. This lone pair and this lone pair are both in sp2 hybrid orbitals. They're not part of the delocalized system. It's a common mistake people will make. And we'll talk more about that if you have questions.